Consume and share news today. It is largely rooted in social media. L is a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Yerika. Good morning, Yerika. <laughs> Good morning. How's it going? Uh, it's going. <laughs> it's going. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Towards quickly the end of the year. Do you know that's snowing outside? No, I did not know that. Yeah, it, not a lot, but uh, it, it was snowing when I got here. Yesterday, but, uh, I got myself snow tires. And did you good know? Good for you. You they're, should. They're no longer called snow tires. They're called winter tires. There was apparently oh, really? this rebranding, and it threw me off completely off balance, in fact. No, snow tires. Right. And apparently, <laughs> they thought snow tires was confusing to oh. everyone because people would only get it when it snowed and uh-huh. that's not necessarily uh, what it's right. about uh, right it is about tire pressure it yes. is anyway well, if that's the case better safe that <laughs> <laughs> was the point i wanted to make i digress all right let's jump into today's buzzwords uh another victim of japan's wartime atrocity has passed away now reducing the number of surviving victims in Korea, of wartime sexual slavery to just 10. Yes, that's right. Uh, Ms. Yook Sun, who was a survivor of Japan's wartime sexual slavery, passed away on Monday. Uh, she was 94 years old. Uh, she died late Monday night at a hospital in Pundang in Gyeonggi-do province. And the news of her death was shared by the House of Sharing, which is a facility located in Gwangju that supports uh, sex slave victims. Mm. Now, her passing, like you said, brings the number of living survivors of the wartime atrocity to 10 out of a total 240 identified by the government. Um, Yeah, so the government, euphemistically, these women are called comfort women. Mm. And uh, the the heartbreaking part about all of this is that, uh, you know... um, these women never got the proper apology that they deserved from the Japanese government. It wasn't just about the financial compensation, which rightfully uh, uh, the 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 country that committed the crimes should owe, but it is also about a genuine apology, which has been something that they've been demanding for years. Um, You know, we've been talking about how these women are getting Mm. older. Up until 10 years ago, in 2012, there were 61 surviving victims. Look at that number drop. In the year 2011, 16 women died in the course of just one year and there's just not much time left for these remaining 10. We do sound like broken records, don't we? That mm. we're running out of time, running yep. out of time. Now, how do we pressure the government? Unfortunately, by, by voicing what we think is right. All right, what do we know about the late Miss uh, Yoks? Uh, she was born in Tegu and uh, she was taken to a brothel in Manchuria, China. Mm. She was just 16 years old at the time. She served as a sex slave for Japanese troops until she returned home um, after Korea's independence and uh, she started living at the House of Sharing on and off from 2014. She ended up settling there permanently uh, in 2018. Now, back in 2013, she filed a lawsuit with 12 other victims Mm -hmm. seeking damages from Tokyo and won the first trial early last year. Now, at the time, the Seoul Central District Court ordered Japan to pay 100 million won to each plaintiff. Mm. Um, now, gender equality and family minister uh, Kim Hyun Sook exp- uh, expressed uh, condolences. She said that uh, Yok Sun wanted the wartime issue to be resolved more mm-hmm. than anybody else uh, and uh, promised to exert continued efforts, of course, to restore the honor and dignity of the victims. No matter how long it takes. Mm. I do no think matter how long it takes. In support that we don't forget either. Right. All right. Let's move on to our second buzzword of the day. Uh, certainly, it seems the culture sector had seen a boom unprecedented during mm. the pandemic. And it was very unexpected. And Squid Game director and lead actor for their efforts, 
receiving a cultural merit <laughs> award on behalf of probably their entire team. Very deservedly so. I think so. Might I add. Um, hit Netflix series Squid Game. Yes, we're still talking about it. <laughs> well, director Hwang <laughs> Dong-hyuk and uh, lead actor Lee Jong-jae have received South Korea's highest cultural merit medal on Tuesday for their contributions to the country's content industry. Mm-hmm. Now, during a ceremony at the presidential office in Seoul, President Yoon seok uh, presented to Hwang and Lee the Kumgwan Order of Cultural Merit, which is the highest medal awarded to individuals who have contributed to the development of culture and the arts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the president commended them for their role in promoting the country's film industry. Well, they did so much more than that. I think we broke through a ceiling uh, that yeah. just seemed unpenetratable. In September, Hwang and Lee also won their prizes for Best Director and Best Actor in a Drama Series, respectively, at the 74th Emmy Awards Ceremony in Los Angeles. I mean, I forgot that this happened because so much has happened. I know. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. It's really hard to keep up. But I don't think it's fair that I keep sort of <laughs> undermining these achievements. I don't intend to. Mm-hmm. It's just we're a little bit desensitized. But this was a big deal. This was the Emmys. Oh, definitely. Now, um, earlier, President Yoon sent a congratulatory message to Huang saying that his, quote, fierce effort and talent uh, has displayed over the course of his career through films such as Silent and Miss Granny led to the, the Emmy Award. And in a separate message to Yi Jong-jae, uh, Yoon said that his remarkable performance merged his character and the hearts of viewers. You know, this could be viewed a number of different ways, but it's also a story of, I think, perseverance for the director. Yeah. I mean, uh, how long did it take for him to yeah. make Squid Game a reality and a hit show? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. It was many failed attempts, mm. years of tapping at all the major broadcasters he wanted to make it in to film when that wasn't possible right. he eventually turned to Netflix that was having its own heyday and it was the biggest show of the year I mean Squid Game I know really but and the second season <laughs> is coming soon I think soon uh, yeah. it's harder and harder to keep up <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it Avatar 2 also took like 12 years to create oh, yeah. what does time do make it better and Avatar 2 is coming uh, in, in two years did I say 2024 we talked about it yeah yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our last buzzword of the day. Yeah. Now, what to make of it is up to you, listeners, but it's certainly created a moment. Is it a political faux pas? You take a look. So the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, mocked for sort of this excruciatingly painful exchange <laughs> with a homeless man. The conversation is, yeah. it does seem a little bit shaky in between. Um, you know, celebrities, uh, mm. political leaders, they simply can't get a break these days um, because of social media. And eyes are on you all the time. All the time. Like really all the time. And uh, everything you say, everything you do, it's shared in real time. And it will be used against you. That's right. So Rishi Sunak has been criticized over the super awkward exchange with a homeless man. Uh, Sunak was volunteering at a soup kitchen in front of a lot of television cameras as well. Uh, He visited a shelter. Uh, After a brief exchange, he asked this man whether he worked in business. And uh, the man replied that he was homeless. It's a homeless shelter. Exactly. Uh, Sunak didn't stop there. He then discussed his own background in the finance industry and asked the man if that was something he would like to get into. I mean, asking a homeless man, would you like to get into finance? It just seems so out of touch with reality. Exactly. Yeah. And I, did he forget for a moment where he was? Okay, so I wonder what this... How did this man, homeless man reply? Well, he replied, you know, I wouldn't mind, but I don't know. I would like to get through Christmas first. You know, and uh, he okay. said uh, he hoped a charity would find him some sort of temporary accommodation so he was not on the street for Christmas. I am cringing at the story. Yeah, uh, yeah. Earth to Mr. Prime Minister. I mean, the problem is, even at the start of his ra- rather newly instated uh, prime ministership, uh, there was criticism that he sort of worked the elite course. You know, he went to prestigious private schools. Yes. And, and uh, he, yeah, was he out of touch? He was definitely out of touch. And uh, people dug through some of the old videos, you know, social media posts that he had uploaded. Uh, and he did say some things that he probably 
probably shouldn't have said in okay. hindsight. Okay. Uh, rather insensitive, I would have to say. Okay. And then there's his wife, who is a billionaire. Yep. Yep. Uh, that this all doesn't really help his reputation, f- and and this story is just a little bit painful to watch. I yeah. think. Yep. Yeah. So many who have seen this exchange, this <sighs> video online, there are many, by the way, uh, have described the exchange as excruciating. Mm. One MP said, "Quote: Watching this, I am concerned that the prime minister thinks homeless means." doesn't have a country pile at the moment. Country pile meaning a country house, right. a fancy house. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so that was the exchange. And uh, I wonder how he's feeling about it right now as I'm, the world talks about his uh, major faux pas. I'm sure he's a smart man. I, I'm sure yeah. he's put together pieces by now and kicking himself for it. Uh, but he hasn't issued any sort of statement about it. Maybe he'll just let it slide. Eventually, if it does, the outroar that is becomes louder. He'll have to address it. Yes. Anyways, uh, Sunog used the trip to out line that the government had pledged two billion pounds to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping over three years. I've actually seen supporters of Prime Minister actually yeah. standing by his side. And basically, it's it's hard to take sides with this story. It's, it might just be a mistake, just really poorly chosen yep. words. Yep. Of, again, a political faux pas. Mm. But it seems that in that political divide, those who support the Prime Minister, no matter what, yep. is saying he was just trying to... Have a normal conversation. Yeah, but in normal quotes. means different things for different people. Exactly. Yeah. And if you can't gauge your audience and who you're speaking to, is communication dead? Hmm. Oh, that might be an interesting topic. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Erica, for today's conversation. Pleasure. See, See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.